got book beast E.J. Dion in the house for his new book, Our Divided Political Heart. E.J., it's good to see you. It's great to see you. Good to be here. Well, listen, th this is a fascinating book because it really does take in the, the scope of American history to make a point about our current dilemma. Y your point is that there's been what you call the long consensus in American politics that was embodied in the mid-20th century um, and that has been lost, um, that balance of individualism and communitarianism, which you think the radical right is really undercutting and ignoring. Build on that idea a little bit. Well, the, the core thesis of the, of the book is that from the very beginning, right from the beginning of our republic, uh, America and Americans have been defined by this deep tension between our love of individualism and our affection for community. And we are both things. Right. We're not one, we're not just one or just uh, the other. And that America has worked best when we have kept these two uh, sentiments, commitments in balance. Uh, and we, for most of our history, I argue for 200 of the 235 years since the Constitution was adopted, we operated within this framework of balance. The exception is the Gilded Age after the Civil right. War when radical individualism triumphed uh, temporarily, although even then government was playing more of a role than we like to let on now. Sure. Um, I think that on the right in our politics, you've had a real transformation. Conservatives used to care passionately about community. Uh, Bill Buckley did a book called Gratitude. Uh, that talks a lot about our obligations to each other. Great writers like Robert Nisbet, old conservatives like Edmund Burke, they were all vitally concerned with what held us together. Sure. Uh, and I think in reaction to the failures of the Bush administration and a reaction against President Obama, um, our conservative friends just really veered toward this radical individualism. They decided that Bush was seen by the country as a failure. They didn't want to blame it on his being too conservative. So they, right. had, they blamed it on his being a big government guy, even though a lot of that big government was in Iraq and Afghanistan. Uh, and, uh, you know, that if prescription drug benefit was bad, it, uh, No Child Left Behind was bad. Even compassionate conservatism was bad. Sure. Uh, and I think that conservatives have thus taken this turn back toward the Gilded Age style. I think this is a big mistake for conservatism, but I also think it would be a big mistake for the country uh, to move in that direction. And that for the time being, it's the progressive side of politics that still, at some level, uh, holds up this balance. Well, and that is one of the things that in your book, you, you do sort of posit that that balance between individualism and communitarianism, or as you memorably put it at one point, high noon and it's a wonderful life, um, really is, is embodied within the Democratic Party entirely, which some people would say is inherently off balance in, in that saying. But it one wasn't party. always thus. Right. And they, I, this is one of the only books anybody's going to read that pays a lot of attention to Jacob Javits, a Republican senator from New York, from New York. Uh, who wrote what I still think is a very important book back in the 60s called Order of Battle. And Javits was a, you know, a very liberal Republican. Uh, and people often asked him, why are you a liberal and still in the Republican Party? And in that book, he sort of has a section called The Choice of Ancestors. And if you look at the roots of the Republican Party, you find it in Alexander Hamilton, sure. uh, who was the guy who favored a strong national government, created a bank of the United States, favored a manufacturing future for our country, uh, and the government had to play a role in bringing that about. Henry Clay, whose American system he proposed in contrast to the British laissez-faire system, and of course Abraham Lincoln, who sure. set up the land-grant colleges. And so I don't think it's inevitable that conservatives stay like this. Um, and one of the things I, you know, I think liberals, um, you know, uh, the, as you say, the book is, I am a progressive, this book is broadly sympathetic to the progressive tradition, but I think liberals sometimes need to remind themselves of the importance of this communitarian streak. If you right. take the movement for gay marriage, uh, and you know, what has the gay rights movement done? I argue it's a quintessentially American uh, movement because the first two big recent demands of the gay rights movement were for marriage and for the opportunity to serve the country in the military. Obviously, those were Very about rights, right. but they were also about responsibilities. It was uh, Americans who are gay or lesbians said, we want to serve the country. We want the responsibilities that's of marriage. A very that's a very and that's, interesting point. Uh, and I think they, in that choice, reflected very much who we are, which is why they've had a lot of success. So, well, listen, it, you know, whether you like politics or political history, it's a great read, Our Divided Political Oh, Heart. bless you. Thank, Thank you, you so much.